What's up everybody? Welcome to another Angler X video. In this week's video, I'm up in northern Wisconsin fishing on a remote trout lake looking for brook trout. Now I've never been to this lake, so you're gonna see exactly how I break down a lake and try and find these fish. We've, we do end up catching some fish, so I think you're gonna wanna see this video. Also, at the end, I cook the trout, so you get to see exactly how I cook trout. If you wanna go right to the cooking, skip ahead to the end of the video. If you want to see the fishing and the cooking, watch this video now. I think you're going to love it. Don't go anywhere. All right guys, I hiked into a trout lake. There might be pan fish in here too, but supposedly they stock it with trout. So I'm gonna give it a shot for a little bit and uh, just drill a line of holes here and we'll fish, we'll fish a lot of this lake. And it's not very big. I think it, it's kind of a shallower and flat over on this end and then it gets deeper as you head that way. So I'm just going to start drilling holes and we'll just keep moving. We'll spend a few hours out here and see if we can get some trout. If we get some, maybe we'll keep a few and uh, do a catch and cook. So this is the first hole I drilled saying about 16 and a half feet. That's a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. It's okay. Trout are a little weird. they not sure where they're going to be. It could be anywhere in the water column. I drilled a line of holes going out and across this, this lake. Maybe we we'll want to get closer to shore if it's this deep. Looks like it's a steep shoreline just based on the shoreline above above water. So maybe off the end of some of these trees be the ticket. But it may take a little bit to figure them out here. We got the rest of the afternoon. Just drill a bunch of holes and see what we come up with. And when a trout comes in on the screen, he's gonna they're gonna come in fast and swipe at the bait if they're gonna hit it and they might leave fast too. So this water's a little stained. It's not really clear water like like I was fishing pan fishing in that last lake. But this one's a little bit stained. It's got tall trees all around it. I don't have a ton of ice, maybe about the same as the last lake. Three, four inches at the most. Let's keep moving along here. Got Seventeen feet here. Something's swimming through. 
bigger marks. Just passing through though. So when I'm searching for fish, I'm not spending a lot of time in any hole and I'm working my bait up and down throughout the water column. These trout could be anywhere really, but um, I'm over the deeper part of the lake right now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is drill in closer. There's a number of trees down along the shoreline. They may be relating more to that shoreline structure than and being out in the open here. There's a fish, a couple of marks. There's a bigger mark. Sure what those are. They don't seem to be paying any attention to my bait. Must be some kind of forage fish or something. They didn't stop at all, they just swam right through. They couldn't care less about my bait, so I don't know what those were. They weren't game fish, more than likely they weren't, otherwise they would have stopped and at least looked. I had something similar come through in that last hole back there. There's a fish down by the bottom. Looks like he's just swimming through. So there is life. They're just not what we're looking for. Fish on. See what these things are. Shiner. Little shiners. Well, forage fish. That's not what we're after. So we got a pretty steep bank here. 13 feet. I am not far from the bank. I got a down tree here. I tried over some deeper water and found some schools of forage fish. Caught one. I gotta try something a little different here. 13 feet seems like a good depth. Off the end of a tree. See if we can put some fish topside here before the before the evening's over with. I suppose these fish could be shallow. It is a darker stained lake. It's white chapo stuck in the log. Well, if I don't catch any fish, at least I got that. Fish. Oh, there we go. Now we're on them. Oh, I told you guys he came right in and just hammered it. It's the shallowest hole we, we've tried so far. and Sure enough, we might be onto something here. There you go, nice brookie. He did not hesitate. Now we're on him. We were fishing too deep. Let's see if we can duplicate that. I 
and get a few of these and that'll be a meal. That's a beautiful fish. That gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I didn't even know he was on there. All of a sudden my line was slack and they come in so quick. Another beautiful fish. Look at that. Such pretty colors on these fish. My goodness. Awesome. So apparently I was fishing too deep. But uh, not, that one came in four feet of water right there. So I just need to work this shoreline and and uh, try and put a few more on the highest here. I think what I'm going to do is drill a few more holes and uh, I'll get my other camera. So all I'm using is this little tungsten jig head. It's a uh, jig head by Kender. I got six pound test, which the size of fish might be a little overkill, but the water's stained, so line weight doesn't make a difference. And then I'm using my my Radcliffe Custom Rods uh, carbon gill. It's a 30-inch carbon rod. I just got this this year. This is the first day I've used it. It's just been absolutely awesome to fish with. Such a great rod. I'm so excited for this ice season to be able to use these Radcliffe custom rods. And I just think it's going to make my ice season so much better fishing with these rods. But so far, so good. Tipping that, tipping that Kender jig head with a, with a wax worm. Just like that. That last fish came in so fast. I didn't even see him on the graph. He was just there. For these trout, you just want to keep the bait moving at all times. You don't have to finesse them at all. They'll just come in and slam it as soon as they see it. They don't mess around like a bluegill would or a crappie. It's all or nothing with these trout, so... I just like to keep it moving up and down in the water column. You can keep an eye on your line. Like that one, that last one I just caught, I just saw my line was slack. I didn't feel them hit or anything and set the hook and there's a fish there. These trout lakes that are stocked in Wisconsin, a lot of them, you have to check the regulations for the one you're fishing, but a lot of them are, you know, put and take fisheries, which is what this one is. And there's no length limit on the fish. There's no length restrictions. And you can keep five fish a day. If I can get five of them, I'll keep five. And we'll grill them up tonight. That'll be a great dinner. I was just gonna eat frozen pizza, but if I can eat brook trout, that'd be even better. Better for me too. I've always wanted to try these these trout lakes in the winter and just never taken the time to do it. It looks like early on, the idea is to, at least what I'm finding in this particular lake is to focus on shallow water. I started out deep, like I said before, and I just didn't see any trout out there. Now they may cruise through there later later in the year, but right now they are definitely relating to the shoreline and the structure along the shoreline. I've got a number of trees down along the shoreline here, and there must be bugs or something growing in there. I'm sure there's some sort of forage base, minnows or something they eat too. If I drilled a few more holes in shallow, I'm going to kind of bump around in here and get those two two trout pretty quickly. I'm hoping we can score in a couple more here. See my graph, I'm just in four feet of water. My jig is showing up huge, but I'm just bringing it up and down, up and down. Just trying to call something in. 
I don't think these trout are too picky. You could probably catch them with a the jigging spoon or something as well. But this pink, this pink head shows up pretty good in this darker water. Those trout have been hammering it, so we'll stick with that. Well guys, this lake produced two nice brook trout for me and then it just went dead on me. I could not catch another fish. I also found a brand new Berkeley Chapo stuck in the tree. So two brook trout and a Chapo. I guess it's a pretty good day. It was a little slow, but we'll take it. We're going to cook these fish up tonight and uh, rest up and make a game plan for tomorrow. Well guys, that's it for today. That was a fun day. We got two nice brook trout, popped a bunch of holes, ended up finding those fish in shallow. So I think if I did it again, I'd probably fish shallow first and work more of the shoreline in here. I think a little bit of sun would have helped us out a little bit today, but all in all, it was a great day, a fun day of searching and catching fish. And uh, hope you guys liked today's video. And until next time, thanks for watching. All right, everybody, I got my brook trout all gutted out. Um, basically, I just gutted them from the anal cavity up, cut the gills, and then pull everything out. Everything comes out, then you got to clean, clean the inside out real good. But you end up with basically the whole fish minus the guts and gills. So I got those two fish. Uh, I'm just going to dry them quickly on a paper towel. And dry them off, dry them off inside and out, and get my pan going. And I'm going to go about medium high heat, cast iron pan. I'm going to let that pan heat up, and then we'll prepare the fish. So I'm just going to lay these in here. The flavors don't necessarily penetrate all that well through the skin. We're going to cook them whole like this with the skin on. So I want to kind of open them up here and get my seasoning packed on the inside there. First thing I'm going to do is just take a lemon, squeeze some lemon juice on them. Get most of that lemon juice in there. Uh, let's see, you're going to take some black pepper. Some salt. I love me some black pepper. Some generous portions of black pepper. I'll salt it. This is pretty crude, but this is where we're gonna do it. I'll salt it. So essentially, got a lemon pepper seasoning on there. I suppose you could just use lemon pepper if you wanted, but we're using lemon it. Now, I'm just going to coat them with some flour. We got our all-purpose flour. I'm just going to pour a little bit in there. Make sure you coat the inside and out. Roll that fish up in there. Good and coated. We're gonna end up knocking off the excess flour. This isn't the best dish for doing this. Maybe a bigger dish would have been easier, but whatever. I'm not Chef Ramsay here, I'm just a guy cooking fish. Let that uh, 
keep that in mind while watching this. I think I'll cook mine in butter. I'm going to cook my fish in butter. Butter. So I'm just gonna throw a stick of butter in the pan. Or on the floor, I'll just throw it on the floor. How about that? Yeah, that's still good. Yeah, I just rinsed it off. Like I said, I'm not Chef Ramsay. Oh, that too much butter? I don't know. Unheard of, right? Never too much butter. So we're going to cook these fish whole. The eye is like a nice indicator for when the fish is done. The eye will turn, the pupil of the eye will turn pure white. When that turns white, you know it's cooked. They are going to be delicious. Once our butter is hot, we are going to throw these babies in there. Oh yeah. What is this stuff? Right there. Shouldn't take long to cook these trout, they're not that thick. Should be just a few minutes on each side. I really want them to be kind of crispy, so. I'll maybe even cook them, you know, even longer than it takes to actually cook the fish. Just to get that outside nice and crispy. We're not going to eat the head, but so I suppose you could have cut the head off. Would have gave me a little more room in the pan too. But the head's still there. No big deal. We will deal with that. You take a spoon and put some of that butter on the inside of your fish there. Like I said, you can never have too much butter. Don't burn yourself. Oh yeah, that's looking good. That's looking good. I'm just going to flip this guy over. Oh yeah, look at that. Back over. Now we're talking. Nice and crispy. Beautiful. See how that eye turned white. Dunzo. And those are done. Turn the pan off, gonna let it cool down, and then I'll show you what we do next in order to eat these. But essentially what's gonna happen is that meat should fall right off of the skeleton. And I'll kind of show you how we get that off of there as soon as they kind of cool down a little bit here. It should just peel right off the skeleton. Just like so.
and you can eat it just like that. Hmm, that's good. Probably eat the skin too. Why not? Mmm. Mmm. It's good stuff. And if you're careful, you can pull it off the rib cage. And the rib cage should stay there. And the meat should come off. Eat the skin and all. Screw it. Mm. The skin's where all the flavor is. You got the skin peeled away. Kind of see how it just pulls up and out of the bone. Just like that. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So, get yourself some brook trout, cut them out, throw a bunch of butter in the pan, season the fish, throw it in the pan, cook it, and eat it. Doesn't have to be real fancy, and it's delicious. Try it for yourself, I think you're going to love it.